Hello everybody, um, today I was going to talk about oceanography and particularly areas of the ocean that uh, have been unexplored and un not really understandable until very recently uh, with all the bathymetric and deep sea imagery that we have. So rather than looking at the land masses that are interesting, we're going to look at different uh, places in the ocean that are super interesting. For example, this part right in here, this part right in here, all these little islands out here. All these underwater things that we don't typically see at all um, and that have only been recently been available to um, see. Uh, a lot of people say we know more about the moon, surface of the moon, than we know about the uh, surface of our own planet because we haven't really studied the ocean so much. So what started this whole conversation was really looking at all these islands around the planet because um, that's what we can see. And next to some of the small islands is actually some very interesting uh, subsea and sea floor um, things that are going on. So particularly in the Western Hemisphere, we're going to look at the Caribbean. Um, and then also on the Eastern Hemisphere, um, we're going to kind of look at uh, basically Oceania, all of Indonesia, uh, Philippines up here, and... Papua New Guinea, and then heading out to uh, New Zealand and uh, Fiji. Um, but there's also some other areas that you may not be familiar with. Here's a tale of Antarctica. This is kind of one half of the Caribbean almost. Um, and then also some other areas that probably not familiar with is the North Pole and then how interesting that is in terms of all what's going on on the sea floor there as well. So there's actually quite a lot of little islands up there on the North Pole. And a lot of people say some of the Countries with some of the most, um, for example, Canada has a lot of ocean front property that people don't really typically think about because it's all so far north. Um, and again, there's a lot of weird stuff going on. You'll notice there's a boot. There's even continents that may have existed at one point or are, are trying to exist new continents. This is one that a lot of people talk about is this weird boot, kind of a backward boot around New Zealand that actually is kind of a weird... Um, possible new continent um, and then also Antarctica what's going on underneath Antarctica there's actually a totally different look um, it's not anything like what we see here on with just all the ice and then lastly we're going to kind of look at some of these lakes and mysterious canals that head into the from the ocean um, this is actually primarily in the Middle East we don't really see this too much um, and also in Europe um, but there are some very big inlets here. You can see this is Mediterranean and then the Baltic Sea up here. And then the Mediterranean even goes all the way back to the Black Sea. Here is actually connected through um, Turkey, right? Istanbul. Um, so, and then there's some weird stuff going on even on the North Pole. And then this all drains. A lot of people think of this as the Great Lakes of the United States, but actually it really drains up into Canada. It's kind of an interesting concept of how all this fresh water... <coughs> <coughs> eventually makes it to the salt water um, and out to the ocean front here. And more of the North Pole stuff, we're gonna try to look at some details about what's going on in certain, certain areas or maybe connected to other areas, both logically and spiritually. And then some pretty interesting stuff regarding Hawaii because there's basically not much going on in the whole entire Pacific Ocean, right? It's very flat um, and the surface is very smooth. Um, and uh, with the exception of Hawaii. So that's definitely a very important question of why that is and maybe how that might be related to Galapagos Islands um, even further out. Um, and then there's some weird stuff going on in the North Pole. You'll see this like uh, this is the Atlantic Ridge, Mid-Atlantic Ridge that heads all the way up to the North Pole. That's kind of very weird because it kind of splits, splits the North Pole in half almost. And then we're going to look at why um, they're so complex around the northern side of South America as well the south side of South America but why there's really nothing in the center of it here except for maybe this little uh, kind of kiss off of Rio de Janeiro um, and then heading also off of Africa then we'll look at Africa a little bit Africa actually is a little bit more complicated in South America because it has Madagascar which is such a huge island and then there's just vast amounts of island chains in here as well as some islands out in here and some other stuff going on here so we'll look at that and then we're kind of looking again at the south pole and then look at possible capital off antarctica which i've been discussing a little bit here and then finally we're just going to look at the last little picture here of how complex all the ocean is uh, i kind of put it in this this angle so you can kind of look at it from a different perspective but just how complicated the ocean can be in certain areas the topic that we're talking about here is actually more of a general topic for the entire planet. Um, I actually worked on a research paper um, separate to this project 
but actually very much related, and it's actually just related to spiritual fishing and what's going on with the fishing industry, particularly in the Caribbean and also in Oceania. So I have a bunch of document here, kind of look at some soil, different regions, and just getting into really detailed complexity about what's happening in the ocean areas in, in between some of these islands. So you might be very interested in what's going on and some of the details, and I'll just go through that really quickly here. You see some, how some of the population is influencing some of the ocean and where that might go into the future and this is kind of looking at how to kind of project some of that in some kind of artistic fashion um hopefully you'll enjoy some of these um artistic uh kind of renditions of how the ocean might work um, and then just some conversation about what we can do um, in terms of uh, cleaning up the ocean and working with all the waterfront uh, property around the world uh, but particularly in the caribbean and looking also at some boat traffic here, as you'll see but it's about 30 pages or so document goes into quite extensive detail um i left some of the images in here um i should probably delete some of these that have been uh fully loaded for some reason i don't know why that one didn't load or why that one didn't load but there is links to some of these and you can kind of go through these and see <clears throat> um and this is also kind of a wildlife diversity map which is really helpful and then i have all the images that we discussed here in this document as well so i'll publish that um uh, momentarily on the video when we uh, conclude the discussion here but you can see these are all the images that we just discussed here but if you wanted all the great details you can go through this and take a look at that um, publish that on my research gate page I have a bunch of other papers that I've also worked on there as well so you can take a look at that um, and then here's kind of a printout what it looks like if you wanted to try to print it out so I just want to make a comment um, you know when I first started working on this maybe five years ago Maybe in 10, um, when I first started looking at the whole planet, um, you know, I was quite scared to kind of dive in and say, hey, this is the way it is or, you know, this. And I still am to some extent. Um, and actually, I really appreciated those those years where I was kind of afraid to even get on camera and talk about it and say, hey, this is one perspective of how the earth is. Um, and I would say definitely if you're interested in this kind of stuff, go for it. Um, try to discuss it, um, get into some details, um, and you'll be very surprised what you learn um, about the whole entire planet. Also, one other thing I would say is I am kind of in a rush to get this project finished up because it is getting colder this winter time. And I was just concerned. I like to have my window open. As you can see here, I have the window open here next to me. Um, and <clears throat> I like to walk around and think about it, talk with the earth, think about this not only logically, but also spiritually. So we'll go back through here and look at some of the details that we probably missed in a moment. We're going to start with the Caribbean here just because it's close to the United States. So um, perhaps nowhere else on the planet, <clears throat> excuse me will we see this Caribbean blue water? Um, it actually happens off the coast of Africa, which incidentally, West Africa has a big chunk of this land that's kind of this Caribbean blue, but, um, and there's also places in the Philippines, obviously, um, and all in Oceania, but um, it's really one of the most important and should be protected uh, very carefully. And it's really close to Florida, Miami. Uh, in fact, my friend just told me that he took a train from Fort Lauderdale down to Miami yesterday for $10, so you can travel um, just this length of the coast. And I think that was round trip too, so... Um, but basically, yeah, they have a new high-speed rail train going right down here. It's really easy to get to and from various areas. And also there's flights all going in through the Caribbean around nowadays as well. So. so let's ask the simple question. What are you personally interested in about the planet? Um, I know what I'm interested in, but ask yourself, what are you interested in? And then I want to ask you a little bit about what I think about this whole question. Is that um, so we understand quite a lot about logically yeah, this is Florida, or yeah, this is Cuba. But how is it all connected spiritually? What do we really understand um, spiritually about the planet? And you may actually be really surprised when you start to think about the planet in a new way, kind of in a fresh, um, unique perspective. Um, and so you'll see that some of these areas are actually quite different. You'll start to see almost a fish here. Do you see, I don't know if you see this big fish mouth open right here, kind of coming in here. And you'll start seeing weird shapes. You'll start seeing <clears throat> interesting concepts, connection points, um, spiritual lines, um, and all kinds of interesting details.
So perhaps one of the big things that changed my life about understanding our planet was thinking about the neuroscience of our planet. I noticed that this guy down here actually kind of looks like the cerebellum or the brain. So you kind of got the top of the brain and the spinal cord right here. And then further, <clears throat> other land masses start to look like uh, almost like a brain. So you have this one here, obviously on South uh, you know, Antarctica, looking very much like a brain. Um, but then also you have it looking down this way. And then I started looking at different aspects <coughs> of that and started reforming my opinion about what the planet is doing. Uh, not only logically, but spiritually, you can almost see like a, a kind of like a, a neuron heading back from an eye looking across over at Africa here, right? So there's all these weird things you'll start to see as you start to look at the planet spiritually. And I definitely recommend looking at it carefully and having fun. And the other really exciting thing about this is you might be one of the first people in history ever to do this, right? There's never really been, uh, you know, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, there's never this kind of imagery that we had available. So as we look at this, really for the first time in history, um, that's what we're doing. We're actually looking at this um, carefully, um, both logically and spiritually. Okay, so that is pretty much a lot of things you need to think about for the Caribbean. Um, you'll start to notice different connections. You'll see um, details uh, all throughout the Caribbean, and I definitely recommend uh, studying all those. Um, but in general, you'll see the circular halo um, it's a little bit more easier to see here, but you'll kind of see this kind of goes around here, um, which is something we should definitely think about um, if you're interested in the spiritual aspect of the planet. Next, I'm going to head over across the ocean to Oceana and the super complex stuff. So we just looked at that, and now we're going to get into pretty much the most complicated part of the entire discussion. Um, I just wanted to jump into that first just because people would probably be most interested in that. So I want to primarily comment on some new things that I didn't quite understand uh, when I first looked at this carefully. So there's this kind of slingshot, um, or what I call the slingshot bikini of the planet that heads out to Easter Island. There's these two mysterious circular loops here. One of these are Easter Island, basically the whole area is called Easter Island. So you can see it almost slingshots out here, and this actually curves back all the way to Mexico. So if you look at the uh, imagery here, there's just some things you might not have realized and expected, but this whole slingshot area basically goes all the way from here. Kind of move this around a little bit so you can see. So you see it's kind of like heavy earthquakes right in here, and then all that kind of flying out to here, and then it curves back in, and then comes back into Central America essentially. So there's Mexico, Puerto Vallarta, and then right down here to uh, essentially Panama. So that's a pretty interesting. Uh, feature of the planet um, that you might not have expected uh, kind of coming out of here. So that was kind of interesting new kind of spiritual discovery for me. Now in uh, the other area that I was really interested in I, I knew about the Banda Strait because this is pretty obvious but when you look off the coast of the Great Barrier Reef it's actually very true so the Great Barrier Reef is here um, but there's actually quite a lot of other stuff going on in the ocean out here even though there's not a lot of earthquakes um, it's very important to look at that whole region. Um, and this is the Marineris Trench, which is obviously very important. So some other things that I wasn't quite familiar with is that just looking at how this kind of curves around here. So when you look to the North Pole, um, the pathway that the fish may take to the North Pole may be very different than say um, humans might take to the North Pole. So. Um, this kind of just there's some re really weird stuff going on if you look further north here there's a kind of a weird um, feather looking structure here in the kind of pushing something weird so there's like almost two gateways there's like an underwater gateway and then above water gateway it's kind of interesting to see that and then there's also this other little area right in here that I wanted to point out uh, on the opposite side And I was, for a long time, I've been familiar with these three triangles on the North Pole. Basically, there's one that's kind of like subsea, one above sea, and then one kind of a mixture, halfway point between like, uh, like a lot of ocean canals and stuff like that. So, um, and from what I understand, uh, this will actually look a lot like Antarctica at some point when this melts. It'll, it'll look a lot of really similar shape to Antarctica. 
Greenland will be. This is also a new concept for me, kind of seeing this new continent um, and just how this may work for the fish. This may be a very fundamental. This is called a Cook Passage here. And uh, Captain Cook went through there at one point and then he actually ended up in Hawaii passing away there. But, um, but basically his uh, whole journey really depended a lot in this region here. Um, so it's just super important kind of a weird loop around here that I think needs to be thought about very carefully spiritually and logically. No new major discoveries on the capital of Antarctica. I would just say there's just this yellow region out here is pretty interesting to think about kind of how that connects on the, both the west side here and the east side heading out to uh, kind of the, the Java Strait or the Sunda Strait. Sorry about that. And this was a very new discovery for me, just seeing how all these tiny little lakes may be related to the North Pole. Um, this is something I've been working on for a long time and trying to understand, and I just kind of finally realized, yeah, this is actually very much related to the North Pole. So that's something super interesting to think about. Um, and then just, of course, all this other stuff should be related to the North Pole, but this is just vastly, um, it's just hard to even appreciate how important all these canals are in here going deep into the uh, earth. So that's all I have for today. Um, I'm gonna go through these images one last time just so you can see them um, and kind of see a quick little look on your screen. Um, there's just so much information here to talk about. It's hard to even comprehend everything because this is um, kind of the planet that we live on for the next millions of years, hopefully. And uh, you know, it's just, there's a lot of information here. So I'm so thankful to be able to work on it. And I hope that you also can uh, study some things and we can talk about that. So feel free to send me a text message. My phone number is 773-321-8181. I don't really take phone calls too often uh, unless I, unless it's serious, but 773-321-8181 uh, is my text. And if you want to email me, you can email me at ashermartin at gmail.com. I don't really check email too often, but uh, go for it. And if you have something extreme that you want to kind of show me pictures and some other things, I'm going to be glad to take a look at it. Thank you so much. See you later.